This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hello there, everyone. This is Cameron Harris again, and welcome to SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox, episode number two. In our last episode, we covered the basic interface of SketchUp. Today, we're going to be talking about the preferences and customizing SketchUp so that it will work exactly the way you want it to. So let's get going. The first thing you're going to want to do is go up to the SketchUp menu right here and choose Preferences. And that's going to bring up this window right here. Now, you have these little sections on the left here, and those are all the different uh, areas where all the different types of preferences are stored. So why don't we just go through these. Uh, first of all, applications. You can set an application for editing image files. I've never really used that feature. I tend to edit all my images elsewhere. So I just kind of leave that alone. Drawing. Uh, Pretty much leave it as is. I've been very happy with the way it works. Um, you can like display crosshairs and uh, bounding boxes and change the way selecting items work, but I've been very happy with the way it works myself, and that's the way we're going to be learning it. So we'll just leave that alone. Extensions. This is a little bit interesting. SketchUp supports plugins very, very nicely, and whenever you install plugins, they appear here. Now you notice they have little check boxes here. These check boxes, if they're checked, the tools or the plugins will load. If it's not checked, they don't load. Now for example, you can see here I have uh, dynamic components, which is one of the features of SketchUp loaded. And uh, 3DX SketchUp, that's a plugin that I use, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that in the later episode. Now you'll notice we have these four guys here that aren't checked, Ruby script examples, utilities, all these different guys here, you can click on one to see uh, where it came from and what version number it is and a little bit about it. I like to have some of these checked. I like to check the Ruby script examples, the utilities tools, and the sandbox tools. Now just checking these will make them load uh, the next time you load SketchUp. They won't appear immediately. You actually have to quit SketchUp and restart it um, to make this, these changes take effect. But uh, we'll be talking more about these in a later episode. These are some more advanced features, but I like to go ahead and check them now. That way they're just always waiting for me. General. This is where I tend to change a lot of things. Uh, let's just talk about this saving tab for just a second. The first thing you're going to notice is uh, the create backup checkbox. So you see it creates a backup when saving a document. Now what exactly does that mean? Well. I'm going to go into my SketchUp file here, and I'm just going to go up to File, Save. I can also use Command S, that's the keyboard shortcut. When I click that, I can choose where I want to save it. So let's say I want to save it to my desktop just for now. I want to save it as a SketchUp model. You can save it as previous versions of SketchUp if you want, but I've never really had a need for that. Don't want to use a custom icon, and we'll just save it as. Uh, we'll save it as test and we'll click save and you can see over on my desktop here that uh, I now have this SketchUp file called test. Now going back to the preferences you can see that it has create backup checked. So what that means is let's say I go back into this file let's say I make a change here so for example let's say I just move this guy here and that's also, by the way, the default um, object in SketchUp. Every time you create a new SketchUp document, this guy's going to be here. Uh, you can delete him. I usually do. Um, but anyway, just make a change and then click Save. Now, what you would expect is for when you click Save, that original file that you saved would just be overwritten with the new file. But that's not what happened. You can see here we have our test file, but we also have this other test file which has this little kind of a tilde thing next to it. That means that it's a backup. So in other words, if we double click this test file, 
it opens up this is our current project this is the last time we saved if we double click the test with a little tilde the backup of it you can see it opens up in a new SketchUp window this guy is right back where he was so what creating a backup does is every time you save it keeps the previous version and it saves it to the same location uh, be it a folder or your desktop or whatever it saves it to the same location as the original file now that can be kinda useful in some cases but it can also get a really cluttery really quickly I tend to uncheck this but you can absolutely keep this checked next is autosave that's pretty self-explanatory if you check this every five minutes or you can make it six minutes or four minutes or whatever you want enter a number here maybe 15 minutes every 15 minutes it's going to automatically save the document now I tend to not do that simply because sometimes I'll save something then I'll continue working and I'll make this huge mistake that I can't really undo I'll just quit it and I have my backup built in that's just the way I work you might want to work slightly differently next is tool palette now I, I like to have the use large tool buttons button checked for example if I uncheck it you can see you get very small buttons in the tool palette here I like to have them large uh, leave cascade main windows checked save current window size now this is where it gets a little bit interesting you can see the SketchUp window by default is pretty small now that depends on what size monitor you have but if I want to make it fit my monitor a little bit better I can just grab right down this corner here you see these little lines here just grab that corner and drag it out to whatever size I like so let's say I like this size now what's gonna happen if I quit SketchUp and yes I'll go ahead and save it if I go back into my original test file by double clicking it you can see the window is back at the same size and location that it was before I quit. SketchUp doesn't remember your last window size by default. So what you need to do is I like to, one of the first things I do is just drag it up, kind of fill a good chunk of my window, leave a little bit of space on either side so I can access files over here and have my tool palette here and everything. Go back into my preferences, go to general, and then just click the save current window size button then it's not going to look like anything happened and visually nothing really did but now if I close SketchUp and open it back up you can see it's it remembers the window size and location so anytime you change your window size and location always remember to click the save current window size in your preferences to make it remember it check models for problems uh, I like to leave automatically check models for problems checked, but I tend to uncheck the automatically fix problems when found checkbox. Basically, sometimes when you're modeling, the way certain pieces fit together kind of violate the laws of physics within SketchUp. Now, granted, the laws of physics in SketchUp are much more loose than they are in our world, but they still have laws, and if those laws get va um, if those laws get violated then that's going to come up as a problem. The model isn't going to work quite right and you're going to oftentimes have errors. Um, this will automatically check for problems whenever you save and if it finds something it's going to let you know a little window will pop up saying hey there's a problem here would you like us to fix it and you just click yes and it fixes it. Oftentimes it doesn't even change anything in your model it's just the way the underlying structure was working it's difficult to predict it's difficult to recreate just when it comes up just be aware that it does come up and finally scenes and styles warn of style change when creating scenes go ahead and leave that checked we'll be talking about scenes and styles in a later episode OpenGL uh, this is uh, some hardware acceleration pretty geeky stuff I tend to just leave these all the way they are shortcuts this is also a very nice little uh, section of preferences let's say that there's a command up in your menu bar uh, that you get to a lot so for example let's say I go to view face style x-ray and you can see x-ray kind of makes everything transparent in the window we'll be talking about that in a later episode as well but if I'm doing that a lot going up to view face style and x-ray every single time I want to toggle that on or off can get a little bit tiring 
What I can do with a shortcut is that right in this window, you can see if you scroll through, these are all of these different commands that are in uh, the menu bar. And you can see some of them, quite a few of them actually, like tools and things, have uh, short keyboard shortcuts assigned to them. So for example, the line tool has a shortcut L. Now, you can go through here and find the command you want, or you can just type in the search field, for example, x dash ray, and you can see there it is, it popped up. Now, I have mine set to shift x. So the next one is template, and this is the same thing we went through in our first uh, setup, initial setup of SketchUp. You can change your template after the fact if you decide all of a sudden, oh, I want to go with meters instead of feet, or uh, you know, architecture design in millimeters instead of feet, things like that. And that's pretty much it for the preferences. At this point, SketchUp should pretty much be working exactly the way you want it to. And uh, we'll be talking more about modeling and drawing and everything in later episodes, but that's pretty much all you need to do to get SketchUp set up and just ready for you. And that's about it for this episode. Now, I'm sure that all of you are anxious to get actually modeling, then don't worry, now that we have SketchUp all set up and we understand the interface, we're going to start doing that in our next episode. Now, in the meantime, don't forget you can email us at harwoodpodcast at comcast.net with all of your comments and questions and ideas, as well as visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. There you'll find all of our show notes and downloadable lesson files, as well as our brand new forums, which I highly encourage you to check out. There you'll be able to interact with each other, as well as me, if you want to ask me any questions about SketchUp directly. So until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.